All right. So this is going to be a nice review of all of the mixed problems of ionic compounds that we've gone through. And so what we've dealt with so far is metals whose charge we know and how to write their names and how to write their formulas, which is really nice and easy. We went through um, metals with whose charge we don't know. Okay. And for that, all you had to do was write the Roman numeral, the charge behind the name of the metal. And then the last thing that's new in this section is um, polyatomic ions. And they're really, don't let them freak you out at all. You just need to be able to identify them. And so we're going to go through this. So this is the third and last new thing that I could throw at you for ionic compounds. So I'm going to write the formula for this ionic compound. And the first thing you should do is you, look, you should look at Cu and say, oh my goodness, well, Cu is a transition metal, therefore I don't know its charge. And so what you're going to have to do is actually look at your anion, which in this case is SO4. Now if you look at your table, which I will give you on your test for SO4, the charge of SO4 is 2 minus, which means if this charge is 2 minus, then the charge of copper has to be 2 plus. Okay. And the only other new thing as far as the polyatomic ions are concerned, you don't add an IDE to the ending like you do for all the other um, nonmetals or anions that we've been dealing with so far. Before, we got rid of the very end. Like for sulfur, we got rid of the ER and added IDE to make it sulfide. Here, we're just going to keep the name of SO4. So to write the name, it's first going to be copper. And the important thing for you to know is that the charge is going to be 2 plus, so we have to include that because the periodic table does not tell us the charge of copper because it's a transition metal. Okay? So it's going to be copper 2, and then SO4 is just sulfate. So I don't change the ending at all of a polyatomic ion. I just write sulfate. Okay? All right, so let's do the next one. I've got sodium phosphite. Okay? So what that tells me, I know that Na, and always work off to the side, guys. You don't need to write the final answer right away. Na has a plus one charge because it's in the first group, okay? group one, the alkali metals. Phosphite is going to be PO3, and it has a three minus charge. And now all I need to do is cross my charges. So the one becomes the subscript for the PO3. The 3 becomes the subscript for Na. And so my formula for this is going to be Na3, PO3. Now, a couple of things. We don't put parentheses around this PO3 unless we have a number other than 1. So, for example, if it were a 2, I would put parentheses around the PO3, and then I would put a subscript 2. Also remember, you will never change this PO3. Okay. You can add more than one PO3 by putting a 2, a 3, whatever outside, but don't change this. Treat this like it's its own element and will never change. Treat it like Na because you would never separate the N from the A. That's just ridiculous. So when people separate the P from the O or remove O's, that just seems ridiculous to me. So hopefully you'll get to that point where you're like, oh, you can't remove the 3 from the O. But until that point, just keep in mind, I don't separate the N from the A. Don't separate the P from any of its O's. All right. For the next one, I tell you it's COS. Well, CO is cobalt, and cobalt is a transition metal, so I don't automatically know the charge of it. So what I have to do is use this formula for it to tell me the charge. So sulfur has a negative 2 charge, which means for this ionic compound to have no charge, cobalt would have to have a plus 2 charge. So I have to include the charge here because if I were to give you my answer in the name, and expect you to write the formula, I would have to include the charge or else you wouldn't know what to do. So here I'm going to write cobalt and it's going to have a charge of 2, 1, 2, and then it's going to be sulfide. Now notice how sulfide and sulfate sound very similar. Remember if you have an ITE ending or an ATE ending, it's going to be a polyatomic ion. If it has an IDE ending, that means that I took a normal element and converted it into an anion, so therefore it came from the periodic table. All right, for lead for dichromate, it's going to be PB, 
And the IV right there, what that tells me is that I am dealing with lead that has a charge of plus four. So I need to include the plus four charge there. Okay, four plus right there. All right, and then the next thing I need to do is write my formula for dichromate. And what you, so what you should do is you should look at your, your chart and what the formula for dichromate is, is CR207. And the charge of dichromate is two minus. Now, remember, don't mess with anything that's here. Okay, I wouldn't take the P and separate it from the B, so don't um, separate the CR from any of its O's. So as I write this, the 2 is going to become the subscript for the PB. The 4 is the subscript for the CR207. And so I end up getting uh, PB, I'll write it out here because I'm need. i going to have to reduce it, PB2, CR207. And the other thing that you need to remember I need to put this in parentheses if I have more than one polyatomic ion, and I'm going to put the 4 as the subscript. The other thing you should recognize is the fact that I can now reduce that. Divide both by 2, that becomes a 1, and this becomes 2. So when I write my formula, it's going to be PB, then in parentheses, CR207, and then the subscript here is going to be a 2. If you forget to put your parentheses, guys, you'll end up with two CRs and 72 oxygens because that's what the two, the two will go with the seven. And that looks bizarre. That will never exist. So please don't write that. All right. So here, um, I don't know the charge of mercury, so I'm going to try and find it out. What I like to do is say, okay, NO3 has a minus one charge. Since there are two of them, they contribute a total charge of negative two which means that Hg has to have a plus 2 charge in order for this entire ionic compound to have no charge. So it's going to be mercury. And the reason why I'm having to write the charge, guys, of mercury is because it's a transition metal, so I don't know its charge automatically from the periodic table. So 2, mercury 2, and then NO3 is nitrate. It's one of my polyatomic ions. All right, for the next one, calcium sulfate, I know the charge of calcium. It's 2 plus. Sulfate is SO4 with a 2 minus charge. And so what happens when I cross my charges, the 2 becomes the subscript for the SO4, the 2 becomes the subscript for the CA. So since I have ca 2 so 4 2, I can reduce that and it'll just become CaSO4. What I want you to constantly keep in your mind, you cannot mess with your polyatomic ions. So if you notice here, I've got two threes. You can't just cancel those out and say, oh, I reduced it. Because PO3 is a polyatomic ion that stays together with covalent bonds. It's going to stay together no matter what. So you can't just cross out the threes and say, oh, look, I reduced it. That doesn't work. You can't mess with the polyatomic ion. All right, Ag2CO3. Well, CO3, if you look at your chart, has a minus two charge. And since there are two Ags, all of the Ags as a whole have to contribute a plus two charge to cancel out the minus two from the CO3. Well, since there are two Ags, each Ag is going to contribute plus one because plus one times two is plus two. Plus two will cancel out the negative two. So I know, actually, I didn't even need to do that because we always know the charge of silver. So I just gave you a little bit of extra information. We don't have to write the charge of silver because we always know it's plus one. So I just wasted a little bit of your time. Sorry about that. It's just going to be silver, but good to know nonetheless. Silver, and then it's going to be... Um, Sorry, my brain's not working. Carbonate. Gosh. You don't have the stuff in front of you. You sometimes forget. All right. Cool. Um, for the next problem, what we're going to do 
is um, we actually just have to sorry I'm erasing some of my work here because I ran over um, I know the charge of nickel I give it to you because it's a transition metal I have to give it to you Whoop, too big Ooh, big all right so nickel has a plus one charge because I told you in the problem with a one Roman numeral nitride don't get this mixed up with a polyatomic since I have an IDE ending I'm dealing with just another ion from my periodic table so it's going to be nitrogen with a three minus charge okay I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cross my charges so the one's going to be the subscript for nitrogen the three is the subscript for nickel so it becomes Ni 3 N so I'm going to be lazy I didn't even need to do the erase and put it right there. All right, for the next one, zinc is one of my two transition metals that I know the charge of. It's a plus two always because the Z kind of looks like a two. So I don't need to write the charge of zinc like I did for all of these other ones because I know it's charged at all times, just like I know the charge of silver because it's the other transition metal that we know the charge of at all times. So it's going to be zinc. And a lot of people say, well, can I just put the charge? No. Please don't. Um, it's zinc and then OH is one of your polyatomics. It's hydroxide. And that's it. Last one. I saved the easiest for last. Magnesium and chlorine. Magnesium is Mg. It has a plus two charge. Chlorine has a minus one charge. So this is like the, one of the first ones we ever did. Okay. Cross your charges. Cross your charges. So this is going to just be Mg Cl2. And we're done.